All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco. And today with me, I have David Galowich. David is the founder of Terra Firma Leadership, chairman of two Vistage advisory boards for chief executives and business owners, and a leadership coach for high-performing leaders and teams with Bravanti. Uh, this is David's second appearance, his encore appearance uh, on the Remarkable Coach. And I couldn't be happier to have you back. David, thank you so much for making time to chat with me again. No, I, pre I certainly appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, Michael. I always enjoy it. You bet, my friend. Um, so our first episode, for those of you listening and watching, um, our first chat was aired on April 26th, 2022. If you haven't heard that already, go back and give that a listen. Um, and, and David talks about all sorts of fantastic things from the importance of vulnerability to peer accountability and group coaching to surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, and today, David, I want to just kind of catch up a little bit. You know, April 26th, 2022 was a minute ago. Um, so what is, tell me a little bit, well, let me backpedal that a little bit. For those of our listeners and viewers who have not yet had a chance to listen to that first episode, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words, what you do and why you do it? Sure. Well, thank you for asking. So, yeah, a, a little bit of a long story. Um, I started in college. Um, I learned a lot about leadership from the coach of the crew team when I was a freshman in college. And really what happened was uh, we had a high performing team at the University of Wisconsin. We had great coaches. We packed up the vans at the end of the year and we drove out to Syracuse, New York for the international, I'm sorry, for the um, IRAs for the rowing championships. Mm -hmm. And I was all excited, but my boat took fourth place and I didn't get on the podium. Mm -hmm. So I was in a freshman four. We were one of the first races of, of a couple day series. I was really bummed out. The coach pulled me aside and said, why are you so bummed out? Well, I didn't get a medal. I didn't end up on the podium. He said, you know, we're here as a team. You know, not here as your, you know, as, as David trying to get a, a medal. And he said, you know, we're here to win the overall championship, not to win just a bunch of individual races. And you put points on the board. By fourth place, we actually put points, team points on the board. Mm -hmm. Long and the short of it was a couple of days later, we won the, the uh, national championship and coach came by and he grabbed me and he said, do you realize now what it means to be on a team? Mm -hmm. Love that. It was, it, it was a lesson that really <laughs> hit home with me. Um, fast forward through a couple of years of college, sort of trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up, ended up double majoring in psychology and communication arts, looking at doing organizational development long before coaching was a field. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really that that um, that interaction with my rowing coach that I think set me on that path. Uh, unfortunately, when I graduated college in 1982, was a horrible year to find a job. Interest rates were in the high teens. Inflation's double what we've been currently worried about. Um, and so actually triple what it, what it currently is. Uh, and nobody was hiring for anything. I uh, come from a pretty entrepreneurial family, uh, and I got a sharp elbow in the side that said, go to law school, kid. So I took a right turn. I didn't do the organizational development stuff that I wanted to do. I ended up going to law school. Uh, that led me down a path of starting my own law firm, started my entrepreneurial journey, ended up moving into business and, and running a business. Um, and in the family of business that we had, we had a few good exits. And what I really learned through that whole experience was it wasn't that we were smarter than anyone else. We were doing all that stuff I studied back in college. Mm -hmm. We were learning how to communicate with people. We were learning how to hold people accountable. It was all that organizational development stuff mm -hmm. that we did. So I decided about 10 years ago um, that I just I wanted to go back and do nothing but develop leaders. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we had some good fortune through some other businesses and some exits there. So I decided to um, go back to school and get some credentials. I felt like I'd been driving without a license up until that point. So I was fortunate enough to get into Georgetown's Institute for Transformational Leadership. They've got a really wonderful leadership coaching program there. Uh, and, you know, the rest of its history, I just, you know, ever since then, I've been working on developing individuals and teams. Love it. I love it. <clears throat> that, uh, I mean, if, if yeah, that, that, that sounds like such a powerful 
way to be exposed to the difference between, you know, I'm upset. I didn't get a medal to, do you understand now why you're on a team? Like what the power yeah. of being on a team, getting yeah. points on the board, you know, you were a part of that. It's, it's the bigger, broader picture. That seems like, uh, that, that seems like a very powerful, um, way to learn that lesson. And certainly at that, at that time in your life, you know, in college and, um, impressionable young man, all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and to sort of, you know, take it back to the Michael Jordan stuff we were talking about in the last episode, you know, <clears throat> Michael Jordan's got a great quote, you know, talent wins games, teamwork and intelligence win championships. Yeah. And so you could have the greatest individual contributors on a team. Doesn't mean the team's going to win a championship unless they really play like a team. Yeah, I love that. I love that. For <clears throat> for those listening, um, listening to this as an audio podcast, not seeing it on YouTube, and for those who who haven't yet heard the, our first episode, of course, I'm always interested in talking about the art or or whatever people have hanging on their walls of their offices. You have the iconic uh, photograph of the Michael Jordan wingspan photo. You want to tell us a little bit about the significance of that for you and what you do? Yeah, as I mentioned, I was I as a young lawyer, I was pretty fortunate to meet a lady who had been hired to set up a not for profit for Michael Jordan. She asked me if I could actually do the legal work to incorporate the foundation mm -hmm. that led to Michael actually asking me to sit on the board and, and be general counsel of the foundation and and actually be involved with running the foundation for seven or eight years, uh, as long as he had the five hundred one c three. And so it's it's. I don't know if you can see the, there's actually a personalized uh, to Dave and a little note from Michael on it, but wow. um, yeah, so it, it definitely has some meaning. Very cool. Very cool. Well, <clears throat> David, tell us, uh, so again, our, our first episode aired April 26, 2022. That was quite, uh, uh, that was quite a little bit ago. Tell us what's new uh, in your world since then. What's new with you, with your coaching, your clients? Yeah. You know, I think well, in, in, in spring of 2022, people were coming out of the COVID experience. Hmm. Uh, and, and that was as far as leadership, but really challenging couple of years. Uh, I think we've now moved on past the COVID experience, but unfortunately that's caused a lot of changes in the, in the workplace, mostly around hybrid and remote work. Yeah. And how do you lead hybrid and remote environments? Um, and so I think, you know, now the, COVID scare is, is pretty much behind us. People are comfortable going back in public settings, but employees are saying, well, not so fast. I sort of like this Zoom thing. I sort of like working in my pajamas. I, um, and so I, that's the big thing is I think people are, are, leaders are now realizing that from a culture standpoint, uh, it's a very different animal. It's huge. And yeah. so the last year, I think most of the leaders that I've been dealing with have been trying to figure out how to deal with the culture issues uh, in order to lead a, a modern day workforce. Yep, that that is the the hot button topic, uh, of course, aside from AI. Uh, it, it, on this podcast and in the the coaches that I speak with every single day um, for the past, I want to say four or five months has been culture, and everybody's mm -hmm. talking about it. And it's it's yeah, I think. I agree with you. We're we're kind of past the COVID uh, era, if you will, um, but there's there's second and third order effects from that 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 we're kind of that I think are are coming are surfacing right now, and a lot of that is resulting in uh, call it confusion around culture and and how mm -hmm. to build it, how to foster a good a good culture. Yeah. And so, and, you know, maybe starting just with a definition, you know, what is culture, right? And I think sometimes people talk about culture, they don't think about it. Well, a simplistic way of thinking about it is culture is simply the way we do things around here, mm -hmm. right? And so um, the challenge with a hybrid and remote workforce is you don't get a chance to see the examples of how we do things around here by the people walking down the hall and, and in the meeting rooms. And um, so it, it, it's really tough to 
um, to pick up that that company vibe uh, and and to live it. Yeah, how uh, for you for your clients and, and your practice, what are you doing with your clients to help them? I don't know if resolve is the right word, but at least kind of, you know, figure out how to navigate this new post, you know, post pandemic hybrid workplace world. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm urging them to do um, is it's all boils down to communication. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, and it's, I think the thing I focus on a lot with my clients is their conversational um, capacity Mm -hmm. and and their conversational um, skills mm -hmm. to make sure that they're accurately communicating adequately and accurately communicating to people the expectations um the support uh and and the vulnerability that's needed to to lead mm -hmm. yeah nice nice uh where are you where are you getting your clients these days how are you marketing yourself these days it, you know, knock on wood, I'm fortunate that I don't do a lot of marketing mm -hmm. um, and, and I've got a very full roster. So I'm blessed with two really great Vistage groups. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those are peer to peer groups for CEOs and business owners. And then I coach each member of, of the groups um, for the most part. Uh, when I have openings there in, in those groups, the, the members uh, refer in people that they'd like to see around the table. Uh, and so I, uh, I do very little marketing of myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then as far as the work that I do with Bravanti, which is an absolutely fantastic organization, um, you know, they're out there, um, really talking with a lot of the fortune 50 and 500 type companies. Uh, and I do a lot of, of team optimization work with them and some individual coaching, uh, through them and, and knock on what I'm blessed that uh, it's been really great assignments, really great leaders, really great teams. And it's been fun to see the results that they're all having. Nice. Nice. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about, well, before we go there, actually. So you're getting a lot of referrals. What are you doing, if anything? What kind of conversations are you having with your uh, coachees? Um, to to encourage them to refer more people in to bring people into the organization in order that you don't have to market yourself yeah yeah that's a great question um, and I often talk to them about their business development efforts and ask mm -hmm. the same question yeah right um, and I am I have to admit I am a terrible salesperson uh, and, and if I would do the things that I urge them to do, to find referrals and and to talk with you know customers that are very happy with their efforts and use that to leverage more business, um, I, I just have to admit you know I, I think just showing up and doing good work with people mm -hmm. they're going to refer. Okay. And I have not been that overt and saying you know great who can you send my way? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've, I've been fortunate. Um, there are some times that I that I'll do that, but not that often. Uh, it's it's really great, you know. And there's a there's a book that you've probably heard people refer to, um, the Prosperous Coach. Mm -hmm. Sure, I've ever seen that. But I, I I read that early on in my coaching journey, and and it really resonated with me. And I think the premise of the book was you don't need a website, you don't need a business card. All you need to do is do your work really well. Right. Show up, be a good coach, deliver value. People are going to hire you and they're going to tell others. And and I think that's really resonated with me and it's worked well for me. I love that. I, I think, yeah, I think there's a, there's a good, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. And, and I think that it doesn't always, it's fantastic that it's coming that easy for you. It, I don't think it always necessarily comes that easy. And I think even we hear on this podcast, a lot of coaches, right? This is this is the remarkable coach. So we get successful, remarkable coaches on here. A lot of you guys um, are 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 referral based, right? That's 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 mm -hmm. you're doing such a good job that you're getting these referrals in. Um, and I think that it doesn't necessarily happen automatically for everybody. And we don't not enough people talking about 
how to get those referrals to happen. Yeah. yeah. Which is it's which great. Happens. And and you know, and, and you know, you're in the marketing business, so you understand, you know, creating brand awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was fortunate that, you know, I sort of hit the ground running when I launched my coaching business and it, it was slow the first year or two. Um, yep. but I, I had expected it to be. Um, but I think it's, you know, in your industry, you know, it's it's all about creating that brand awareness. Mm-hmm. And so if somebody new coming into the coaching business, you know, you need to, yes, you, you need to create a website. You need to tell people what you stand for, how you're going to do it. You, you need the business card. I, I was sort of poking at it using the Prosperous Coach a second ago. But, but realistically, you know, I think those are all important things. Doing things like what we're doing today, this conversation and yeah. I had a podcast. Um, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to be invited to be on your podcast. You know, that to me is my form of marketing. I'm not going to actually go out and seek it, but when it comes my way, sure. I enjoy the conversation. We have a, a great time together. And and yeah, I hope that other people will listen to this and maybe someone will pick up the phone and call me. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful for, you know, Boxer Media and, and, and you for inviting me to be on your podcast. That, that's one way of marketing. I love it. Yeah. And that's, and that's one of the reasons we, we do this podcast is for you guys to be able to do that. And I think this is um, in, in every way a form, not this podcast specifically, but, but podcasting, doing interviews, being out there. Um, mm-hmm. it, it absolutely. It's, that's, that's building brand awareness. That's building authority. It's building trust. Um, one of the things that I love about these kinds of um, this kind of content marketing is that your your i your, your 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 clients your prospects can watch this they can hear you speak they can see mm-hmm. your your face as you're talking and they can either resonate with your message or they can absolutely hate what you're saying mm-hmm. and in a way it really pre-qualifies a lot of these prospects so that when it comes time they need a coach if they have resonated with you and they've seen a few of your podcasts they've seen maybe some posts on social media um, you know, it, it almost removes the, the sales part of, uh, you know, of it removes the selling because they've already right. they've sold because they've heard you talk on some podcasts and they, they know what your message is and they know what you're capable of and they like the way that you talk about it and the way that you do mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And then, you know, just another thing that I did early on and I still try to do as often as I can is just volunteerism. So I, uh, you know. I've run discommunication workshops for nonprofits for free. Yeah. Right. Just because I thought it was the right thing to do. But but that puts you out there and it creates a, a, an awareness of your brand. Um and so you know, I would encourage people to to give back. Mm-hmm. And it actually pays you back in spades. I wouldn't do it with the, oh, I'm only going to do this if it's going to develop three sure. or four new client relationships. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think ultimately, yeah, there there is this bigger good that circles around if you do good things that pays you back a little. Yeah, it's an interesting. I mean that that's a uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But I, I was talking with uh, another coach earlier today about this. This there's an, an interesting dichotomy I think between entrepreneurs that are in it for themselves a little bit too much. Maybe they want the freedom or they want the, you know, they want the high ceiling for income. They want to make Mm -hmm. a bunch of money versus entrepreneurs that are really out there solving problems for people. Right. And, and the, the dichotomy being, of course, that if you're out there to really, really help people, those tend to be the entrepreneurs that make a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if you, I got to remember the saying, but you know, someone told me that, um, yeah, your why making money is is not the thing, right? You, you do what you enjoy and, and and do it well, and then the end result is you'll make money. Yeah, but the, if you just go into it with the intent of making money, it's that you, you're probably misguided. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, uh, I think I know the quote you're talking about, and I don't know it exactly either, but it's something yeah. along the lines of right, making money is not the reason you do something; it's the effect of doing it or the effect exactly. Of- Something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm struggling. For the, there's a great quote around it. And I think we're probably thinking the same one. Just neither of us can put our finger on it right now. But you yeah. got the concept. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, cool. Dave, tell us a little bit about, uh, I think a lot of our listeners 
you know, are probably familiar with Vistage. A lot of people understand Vistage. Mm -hmm. What about Bravanti? Can, can you talk, talk to us a little bit about those two organizations and how they're different and, and what your involvement is there? Yeah, absolutely. So Bravanti um, is an organization that was originally a BPI group out of Paris, France. Uh, they started, I think, more in the, you know, outplacement talent management type space. Mm -hmm. um, started doing leadership development probably 10 or 15 years ago. Um, they're an international organization. They have probably 150 coaches like me on their cadre uh, around the globe. And mm -hmm. so we're able to service large international organizations um, with, with coaches on the ground all the way around the globe. Um, you know, they, re they were purchased and, and rebranded a little while back. And when they rebranded the name Bravanti, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, is to, you know, uh, a, a mashup of Brave and Avanti. And so so it's Brave and Moving Forward. Type. Uh -huh. um, but and, and just wonderful people there, just really there to help develop individuals and, and teams. So is it similar to Vistage then, or is it is it a similar type of organization or? No, no, totally different. Okay. Yeah, totally different. Okay. Uh, they also still do, uh, they do some outplacement work. They do some leadership acceleration work. They, uh -huh. uh, you know, they're active in the DEI space and, and doing some leadership training and, around the DEI space, uh, but, but very different than Vistage. Vistage is really focused on peer groups, Originally, Vistage was uh, for business owners and CEOs. Over the years, Vistage has now developed other uh, leadership acceleration programs that are geared towards key executives, uh, advancing leaders, emerging leaders. Uh, and so they've, they've developed a few other products, but um, very different than what Bravanti does. Yeah, awesome. And then how, you know, what's the... What's the ideal, what's your ideal client for a, a Bravanti engagement, for example? Yeah, generally C-suite, uh, C-suite leaders. Uh, a lot of times uh, the, the assignments that I've had have been leaders that uh, are new to their role. And mm -hmm. so it's integrating them with their team um, and sort of how do you get them to integrate really fast. Uh -huh. uh, I don't do any remedial work. If I get a call that says that, uh, and, and I don't think with Bravanti, we get a lot of remedial work, but I try to stay away from the assignments where it's somebody's broken. We need you to fix them. Yeah. Um, you know, I like the, somebody's a, a really good leader and we want to get them to the next level. That's the stuff yeah. I'm looking for. Sure. And then in the last couple of years, I've, I've really enjoyed the Bravanti work um, where I work with leadership teams. Uh -huh. And so we have, um, usually a four day program that we run with them over the course of a couple of months. Um, that is really team optimization. Uh -huh. uh, and it's, it's, it's powerful. It's really good work. Yeah. I love the idea of focusing on, on, on proactive work instead of reactive work. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, why is that important for you? Why is that important for Bravanti? You know, I think it, I, I can only really speak for myself on it. Yeah. Um, and it's just where my skill set is. Okay. Uh, it, it's just where I think I can do the best good. Um, mm -hmm. you know, as I mentioned, knock on wood, I'm busy. I can sort of choose my assignments and I try to stick to what I do well. Yeah. Um, and there are lots of other great coaches that do that remedial piece real well. And it just, um, uh, you know, not, it's just something that just never enjoyed as much. And as a result, I probably don't do it as well as others. Nice. I had a client interview once where, you know, halfway through the interview, um, sort of a chemistry call to see if, if we'd fit and if we wanted to work together. You know, he said, well, the only reason I'm doing this is my board of directors said that I need a coach. Mm, that's awful. Uh, and I said, well, tell, tell me why your board said that. It was, well, I don't know why they said that because I don't need a coach. Ugh. Well, you know, that's not an assignment I'm going to take. No. Uh, if, no. if they're not going into it willing and, and wanting to learn and um that's just something that i think there may be somebody else would be more more suited to work with the person i don't know if anybody's suited for something like that i mean if you if you draw the parallel from 
let's you know let's say sports right as as someone who is being coached you're the one putting in all that hard work the coach is there to guide you not do the work for you you're hiring you're, you're getting a coach not a consultant right and that's right. i think for me that's one of the, the one of the distinctions between a coach and a consultant is, right. is doing the work for you t or, or telling you what to do versus uh guiding you in a, in a specific way and i think yeah. that if, if someone you know yeah if someone's superior uh is is telling them you need a coach and they're like i don't need a coach i mean that's that's uh, destined for failure yeah yeah absolutely and, and i'm glad you made the distinction between coach and consult because yeah. that's important now it's is i think disingenuous of me to say that i'm always 100 percent in coach mode but, but if I'm slipping out of coach mode and I'm moving a little bit towards consultant, which happens from time to time, I try to be very clear. Yeah, I said that I'm switching the hat, right? Yeah. Um, I don't want them to think I'm giving them answers as a coach. Um, tagline that we use a lot, you know, that I use a lot, um, some of my, my uh, fellow coaches use, um, I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm here to question your answers. Mm-hmm. I got, yeah. Another one that I like is I'm, I'm here to help you find the right questions, which is kind right. of similar, you know, yeah, very similar phrase differently, but, but similar to what you're saying there. Yeah. yeah. Great. That's great. Dave, what three books would you recommend all your clients read? Wow. Uh, there is such a long list of them. Uh, <laughs> I mean, really, uh, it really depends on, you know, if, if we're talking teams, uh, the one that inevitably I, I urge everybody to read is Pat, Patrick Lencioni's Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Love it. Um, it's it's written about a fictional company. It's, it's a fable that you can knock off in a couple hours. But he lays out a framework that's really good as far as what it takes to have a high-performing team. Hmm. Uh, and so I definitely put that on the list. Um, you know, delivering feedback and, and having that conversational competence, I think, is really important. I think Kim Scott's Radical Candor does does a really nice job with that. Um, and then a third book. What would a third book be? I uh, just one that keeps being top of mind because it just shows the the grit that it takes to to get through life as man search for meaning. Victor Frankel. <laughs> That's great. Uh, just just to throw a deep one in there. Um, <laughs> That's a great one, man. I. I uh... I've, I've lost track of how many times I've read that book over the years. It's, it's one I go yeah. back to for inspiration and, you know, internal guidance, motivation, everything. It's a powerful mm -hmm. book. And I think uh, uh, it's no secret that it's a powerful book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you know, it, it, it comes up in almost every coaching assignment that, you know, you need to create some space between stimulus and response. And he's, and he's got a lot of good quotes on that yeah. uh, in there, but you know, creating that space so that you can actually think and have the right response is incredibly important, yeah. uh, especially as a leader. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you online? Yeah. The easiest is LinkedIn. Galowich is not a common name. So it's G A L O W I C H. If you find David Galowich on LinkedIn, you can connect with me and, and message me. Uh, also, my website, uh, www.terrafirmaleadership, that's T-E-R-R-A, firma, F-I-R-M-A, leadership.com. Uh, it's a good way to find me as well. Awesome. And we will, uh, of course, include those links in the show notes. Uh, David, is there anything else that you would like to chat about that we did not have an opportunity to touch upon today? No, I think we had a great conversation, and I certainly appreciate you inviting me to be on the podcast. You bet, man. It's always a pleasure. I appreciate your your point of view. And uh, I don't think, I, I'm trying to remember, if, I mean, we recorded the last episode a minute ago, but I don't remember you mentioning that the the wingspan photo was was signed and written specifically for you. So that's, I mean, that's amazing. That's, uh, yeah. that's a thing of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and then my closet behind me with all my books it's there's four corporate minute books filled with signature pages where both michael's signature and mine on the same page so those, those are the ones that i really enjoy looking at time to time. Amazing. amazing amazing david galowich uh man thank you so much i appreciate uh, you making time to catch up with me today hey good talking to you michael hopefully we'll talk soon
You bet. And thank you, as always, to our viewers and listeners. Uh, without you guys, this podcast is nothing. So really appreciate you guys uh, watching. Please be sure to follow, like, subscribe, share with somebody. If you thought this conversation um, was, was powerful, was important, and you know someone who might like it, please share it with them. That'd be great. And we will see you guys uh, at the next episode. Take care. Beautiful. Thank you.